What a day, I had sex with a woman on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, yeah! <laughs> Yeah, boy. Yeah, that goal by John Stones was pretty nice, great. But, no more Timotheos, no more Mykonos. <sighs> Women. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're gonna get straight into this. First thing I'm gonna say is that Mark Goldbridge is pissing his pants again. Estrogen in this morning. Great, great start. You know when he is bitching about a call, you know that it was a correct decision. Saw this tweet from, J uh, from uh, Dale Johnson on ESPN. He said, and I quote, to clear up some confusion about the TV coverage, John Stones' goal was disallowed for offside on the field. The VAR review was to overturn that and allow the goal. Also, some other confusing information given on TV, Silva being in contact with Jose Saw during the flight of the corner isn't relevant as there's no offside phase at this point. Any offside offense by Silva only begins at the point Stones heads the ball. Obviously, we're going to start about that controversial call, but within the laws of the game, they deemed it a goal. It's a goal. You can go cry to your mama, go cry me a fucking river. I don't give a shit. You're mad because it's Manchester City. Any other team, beautiful. Prime Barclays, right? But I'm seeing people uh, relate this to that Hoyland goal with Man United and Burnley. Completely and utterly different. You could just look at the pictures within five seconds, deduce how much of a difference those two situations are. Nevertheless, the Barnsley Beckenbauer, John Stones. <laughs> Every City fan loves John Stones more than their own parents. Let me tell you something. Equalizer at the death against Arsenal at the Etihad. And now he wins three points against Wolves. While Mr. Rolls-Royce gets a red card. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to quickly talk about Wolves and their performance today. Wolves, oh my goodness. I am so sorry about that fixture list. Wow. Horrific, horrific amount of luck in the first run of games. Bottom of the league right now, but they've played some of the best teams in the league. All right, Arsenal, City. The only team that they could have beaten was Brentford, and they lost in that 5-3 thriller. But still, the other games, it was... Uh, Chelsea came here. City came here. They played Arsenal. They had a tough run of fixtures. Their next, their next six or seven games are very favorable. They are going to start their season right now. This has nothing to do with how good Wolves are. First thing I'm going to say with some of the players. Well, first thing, Wolves in general. Fantastic display by Wolves. I think Gary O'Neill should be very, very proud of his team today. And honestly, the counterattack, that, that pass by Nelson Semedo. The stuff of dreams. That is what Kevin De Bruyne does. I haven't seen De Bruyne make a pass like that. In a while. Nelson Semedo. <laughs> Incredible game by Nelson Semedo. Yes, they lost. Amazing assists. He had Savino on lock the entire game. And Doku on lock for most of the game. Nelson Semedo. Brilliant performance. Generally, Wolves in their play, they went at it. They weren't defensive. They didn't play like Arsenal. They played actual football and they went at us. Counterattacking defensively sound and they counterattacked us. And it worked. Jose saw. I tweeted this saying you should add him to the list of goalkeepers that turn into prime freaking Manuel Neuer. Jose Saw, incredible. I'm so glad he stayed at the club. Everybody loves Jose Saw. With the arrival of Johnston that he might be leaving, but still Jose Saw kept this place and he deserves it. Great stuff. I thought Do uh, Dawson, Dawson. <laughs> Dawson was excellent today. Erling Holland didn't do a goddamn thing today. Absolutely nothing today. Uh Poor performance by Erling Holland. Do I really care? No, we won the game. Aiton Nori, I thought, started the game pretty poorly. Savino actually got around him a couple of times, but I thought Aiton Nori was playing pretty well uh, for the end of the first half, and he was pretty good in the second half as well. Yes, I know the 2-1 doesn't justify an individual performance like that. Our wingers, Doku and... Uh uh, Savino, even when Grealish came in, they didn't really do too much today. And the fullbacks of, of uh, Wolves played excellent today. Larson, fantastic finish. He gave us a lot of problems. Acuna had his, uh, had a nice shot in the second half from like what 25, 30 yards out. It was a pretty, it was a really good shot. Carlos Forbes when he came in, he, ex City player, immediate impact. He almost had Larson in for another tap in. Wolves showed out today. 
As far as City goes, I'm going to start with our goalkeeper, um, Ederson. Great save on that one-on-one -on -one with, I believe it was Nelson Semedo again. Ederson has been impressing me a hell of a lot over the last several weeks, and I'm sure a lot of you as well. Our defense, yes, we conceded that goal, but again, the, I can't tell you how difficult of a pass that is. Um, from Nelson Semedo. Um, beautiful. That is a beautiful assist. Jeremy Doku's assist wasn't an assist. That is an assist by Nelson Semedo. So, Ruben Diaz and John Stones. Fantastic display. Uh, most of the second half. I thought John Stones gave the ball uh, away a couple of times. But he recovered well. Ruben Diaz was playing really well today. A uh, great shot by Ruben Diaz. Uh, that's the thing about him and Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker is a little bit reckless with his shots. Ruben Diaz is composed. Whenever, whenever Ruben Diaz shoots, you know that it's going to be... It's going to be on target. And it was just a great uh, display. Rico Lewis has been such an incredible key component in our in our uh, in our team. He's like a beautiful filler type player. He just fills in roles, he fills in pockets really well. He aids in our fluidity really well. I just hope he can somehow show some of his individual brilliance as the season goes on because Rico Lewis was amazing today. Some of the passes that he was doing, the quick one-two passes, the hardest thing to do in football, play it simple. One touch, looking back, looking to, uh, looking to your left, looking to your right, looking behind you, and knowing what you're going to do with the ball before you get it. Rico Lewis has got that on lock today. Be beautiful performance by Rico Lewis. Josco Gavardiol, oh my word. I honestly think Gavardiol is a better finisher and a better shooter of the ball than our wingers. All of our midfielders and 100% better than any defender I have seen in recent memory. His weak foot, remember, he's a lefty, ladies and gentlemen. Great control by, by uh, Jeremy Doku. Just that, that shot from Gavardio just took my breath away. Right-footed shot. I got flashbacks of, of the of the Bernabeu. It was actually a much better goal than the Bernabeu goal. But again, it's it's against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, so it obviously meant more in the Champions League. But that goal against oh, Jose Saw couldn't do a, th a goddamn thing about that. Right-footed shot, top right-hand corner. <laughs> Absolutely exquisite. Beautiful performance by Josko Gavardio today. <laughs> Mateo Kovacic and Ilkay Gundogan. If I were to give it like a numerical value, I'd say like a solid six, six and a half, maybe even a seven out of ten. Kovacic won some free kicks because of his ability to dribble the ball. Gundogan was getting in some beautiful, beautiful positions in the first half. The flicks that he was doing, even to Rico Lewis, who should really pull the trigger a little bit more. Rico Lewis is a little bit... He should really just shoot the ball more, Rico Lewis, because he he has a good shot. He has a much better shot than people think he has. Gundogan, my uncle. Great performance by Ilkay Gundogan. I'm seeing some fans on Twitter criticizing Kovacic and Gundogan. I don't know what you were watching. They did, they did their jobs. They were holding up the play. The only problem was the counterattack. Okay, they're not quick players. I'm probably faster than Kovacic and Gundogan combined. It's not really that big of a deal, all right? But they don't have the pace to get back. They really don't. And our counterattacks... We really suck at defending counterattacks. We're probably one of the worst teams in the league at defending counterattacks. Our midfield doesn't have the pace, but still, that is our that is our style of play. Close control dribbling midfielders that get into pockets that can dribble and create space that can create chances out of nothing. Gundogan and Kubicic, they were passing the ball really well. They were distributing the ball really well. They were checking in. I'm seeing them sprint into positions. In attack, they were getting into positions. Honestly, great performance by those two. On the complete other end of the spectrum, Savino at performance today. If I were to give it a numerical value, just take these with a grain of salt, by the way, but it's just, you know, it helps some people understand better, but 4 out of 10, 3 out of 10, honestly. Not a good performance by Savino. He had a decent shot in the first half. That free kick was terrible. Completely miscued a kick and just hit the air. He, he was hitting air particles, not the ball. But Savino today, oh my god, Nelson's, he couldn't do anything against Nelson Semedo today. Like I said, great performance by Nelson Semedo. He couldn't do a goddamn thing against the fullbacks today. Don't get me wrong, Savino started pretty well in the opening couple of minutes. He was beating Aiden Nori. He beat Aiden Nori a couple of times. He was getting into space. He was His little shimmies, his little uh, dragbacks were really nice. Uh, not a good performance by Savino, in my opinion. Do I really care too much? No, he's going to bounce back. I'm sure of it. Jeremy Doku. Now, this is going to this is gonna tell you a lot about you as a City fan, depending on your opinion on Jeremy Doku today. I loved it. 
I love Jeremy Doku's performance today. I, I'm not gonna. He was taking risks. He was uh, he was trying his best. He got a, a lot of amazing crosses out in the first half with his left foot. Yes, he had the assist to Jeremy uh, to uh, Josco Gavardio. It's not really an assist in my opinion. It's just a pass, but still, good performance by uh, Jeremy Doku. A lot better than Savino, in my opinion. Yes, Savino got that shot off, and Savino was you know, dribbling you know, a couple times at the beginning. But Jeremy Doku today, he was getting into position. He was taking risks when I wanted a player to take risks. He was one of the only players taking risks. And if you notice, a lot of the players were giving him the ball. Kovacic kept feeding it to Jeremy Doku. Gafordio kept feeding it. Stones, Ruben Diaz. Savino was wide open a couple of times. And I saw John Stones take it back with his right foot, give it to Diaz. Diaz gives it to uh, Jeremy Doku. You have to understand that wingers are going to lose the ball a lot. It's not about how you respond to goals. It's about how you respond to getting locked up by defenders. There were times when Jeremy Doku brushed past um, Aiton Ori in that second half. Showed a lot of strength. Or right, He's like 5'6", 5'7", but closer to gra- uh, better sense of gravity, closer to the floor. It's hard to knock off a short player, a short, bulky player like that. Or right, Jeremy Doku might look weak, but trust me, I've played against professionals, a lot of wingers, that small, that strong. It is not an easy task, ladies and gentlemen, at all. I thought Phil Foden and Jack Grealish were... I thought Grealish was was uh, was actually pretty decent when he came on. Phil Foden, again, it, it, it's, it's so sad to see a reigning player of the year, the best player in the league now a bench player for Manchester City. Even when De Bruyne is out, he's still getting benched. I, I don't get it. I think Pep Guardiola's uh, switch with Savino and Doku didn't quite work, in my opinion. It just didn't. Savino on the left didn't do anything in the second half. Doku on the right actually did a couple of things in that in that second half. You know, Savino was... Uh, he couldn't get past uh, Semedo. At least Doku was getting past um, Nori a couple of times. We didn't get Phil Foden on the ball a lot today. Especially in the areas where I know he'd be most effective. I'm not going to blame Phil Foden for this. I hope none of you City fans blame him for this performance. It's all it, This is on Pep Guardiola. We're just lucky that John Stones had that amazing, amazing, amazing header. But regardless, not a good performance by Phil Foden. It's on Guardiola. In my opinion, that was just the wrong decision. Grealish was tracking back. Grealish was pressuring heavy. Heavy, heavy, especially in the 89th minute, I remember that. All right, and he won the ball back. We won the ball back. First corner was terrible. Second corner was a little bit little bit too long. But again, Jack Grealish, when he goes to the byline, that's the thing about Jack Grealish, and that's, that's the thing that Savino doesn't quite have yet. He can't chip the ball in to those dangerous areas with his weak foot. Jack Grealish has got that on lock. As soon, he can go with his right foot or his left foot. Those crosses in with those chips with his left foot, exquisite. Holland couldn't get on the end of anything today. Again, horrible performance by Erling Holland. One thing I'm gonna say about Jack Grealish is that I wish, for the love of God, he can shoot the ball with power. I, I don't remember the last time he shot the ball with with all of his power. I actually I can't I can't remember it, but I haven't seen it recently. That shot from Jack Grealish, uh, where it was just coming onto him. Look, it's a snapshot. You don't have a lot of time to think about it. But again, you're a professional player. You're wearing the number 10. You need to hit the ball just a little bit. With more power, please. Yes, going on target is great. But if you hit it with more power, something could happen. More difficult for the goalkeeper to reach that ball. Because that ball was slow as hell. All right, Snorlax could have saved that ball. All I'm going to say is that today was first half. I really liked how we played in that first half. I really, really did. A lot of chances. Bernardo Silva almost equalized as soon as we conceded that goal. Said great. Uh, Savini almost scored. We had some great, great performances by the uh, by our players in terms of attacking threat. Jose Saw was just unbelievable today. So there's nothing wrong with that. I thought Wolves were excellent. That pass from Nelson Semedo. I'm not going to get on my defenders because to defend a ball like that, you have no idea. It's it's just, there's literally nothing you can do with a ball like that. That was one of the best assists I've seen in the Premier League this season. So if you are a Wolves fan, trust me, your season starts right now. I have full faith in you. I do not want to see Wolverhampton go down. I know Wolves have been our boogie team for the past couple of seasons. I don't really care. I, w- when I think of Wolves, I think of the Premier League. I don't want Wolves to go down. This season, for them, starts now. Three points, top of the league. 
we'll see what uh we'll, we'll see what Liverpool and Chelsea are doing. That Bournemouth game against uh, Arsenal. I mean, Arsenal fans, stay humble. Stay humble, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm seeing videos of discount Danny Levy saying, oh, all of our hardest fixtures are out the window. And then you lose 2-0. And he said the ref was a Liverpool fan in the Bournemouth Arsenal game. I might make a video about that in the next couple of days. We shall see. But regardless, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the Barnsley Beckenbauer, baby. Three points to one, top of the league right now. I will see you all next time.